Uh, okay, so we, uh, we who is uh, holding this uh, webinar, it's uh, me, Herola Christensen. Uh, I'm a business solutions manager for uh, the energy market. Uh, and we have Daniel uh, Stigel, uh, who is application engineering. Uh, and we have JJ Sun, who, will, uh, who is a network and cybersecurity specialist. So I leave it to you now, JJ. Thank you very much. And Kalula. And hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is JJ speaking from Malmo, Sweden. And um, today we are going to share with you about the network and cybersecurity, especially in our electricity. And we very welcome you, yeah, for all of you from Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Finland. And we hope you have uh, enjoyed today's webinar. So this is today's agenda. Um, we have a very tight uh, schedule, so um, we will go through all these important five points. Um, first one is the why power electricity industry is so prone to cyber threat. And the second one is how those attacks happen. And the third one is the core defense concept of cybersecurity. And then how should we do cybersecurity for power electricity? And then the, the fifth one is why network security is so important. We will spend around um, 25 minutes in explain these five top important things and then follow by um, how co um, finished content can help. So let's start. So the, fir the first one is why the power industry is so prone to cyber threats. Um, we can say it's uh, our power electricity system is getting smarter and smarter, but it's not secure. During the last decade, smart grid and IoT digitalization have transformed the power electricity system smarter and smarter. However, on the other hand, it becomes less and less secure. The power electricity system by nature is not secure. It consists a large number of devices and over a large geophile areas. They are new or old devices, and most of them, they are not designed with sufficient cyber uh, security to against cyber threats. And also, the ecosystem is very complex. From the grid owner, system integrator, uh, service maintenance provider or product uh, provider, uh, even in uh, now we have a disputed energy provider and also to the end customers all these uh, different parties play their roles in different stages from design commission operate maintain and so on so to have a synchronized or manageable cybersecurity among all these part uh, stakeholders and also among these uh, different stages is a great great challenge and a uh, certain power electricity system as the heart of critical infrastructure. It faces the uh, highest level of cyber attack. This is why the most famous attacks such as Duxnet, Harvex, Black, um, Black Energy, Crash Override, and so on, most of them they took power electricity system as their target. So how this uh, attack happened? Here, we would like to use the cyber kill chain uh, to explain all the steps, how the attack hack into your system achieve their goal. So as shown in this diagram, um, the, the complete network consists, uh, for example, from the external network is the internet, and then the enterprise network managing the, for example, the business activity, financials, and so on, and then down to the industrial side, the power electricity system, which consists of three parts. Um, we say operate, station, or fill a process. So at the beginning, at the beginning, the hacker start with gathering information to find out the weak point of the targeted system. This stage is called the reconnaissance. Okay. And in addition to all those technology the taker can use, please think about who are they and what are their motivations and what they can do on you. And as we just mentioned, power electricity face the highest level of threat attackers. So they most of them, they are supported by nation states, by the countries, for example, by US government, by Russia, by, or even by, for example, like China. So these kind of hacker has 
uh, advanced technology and also has a extended resources so they can launch a very serious uh, attack on you. Also, we have cyber uh, criminal, they have financial purpose and so on. But please do not forget insiders. Insiders are the people very often we think about their employees, but they are not just employees. They can be their for your formal employee. And also the, for example, the engineer from the system integrator, the engineer from the service provider, so they can attack your system by per on purpose or even by mistake. So please think about this. And after the hacker collects uh, enough information, he starts to do his weapon. In this stage, we call it weaponization. Very often, it's kind of malware, virus, Trojan, or even some certain kind of ransomware. After the weapon is ready, the hacker start to deliver the weapon to you. So there are several things that most common happen to the uh, power electricity system. The first one is a phishing email. The hacker send the email to someone in your organization. It's not necessary to be a technician. It can be someone, for example, in the financial department, someone in the HR department, or even and in the re reception. And the people who receive this email, if, he, if that one click uh, the link or open the document in the email, then the computer is infected. The computer is infected. So the hacker has success uh, his uh, action to uh, get into your organization. The second uh, most common way to do that is we call it watering hole attack, watering hole. This is a method that hacker attack your supplier's website. And for, for example, it change, manipulate the firmware um, so you to download. So you download a firmware actually that is um, manipulated, so it has a virus on it, and you download that firmware and upgrade to your device, and then your device is infected. So in this case, we call this is what hoarding uh, attack. This is a very, very common technique. And the next one is remote access. Although most of us, we think about, okay, we are using VPN, it's very safe. However, still remote access is a, um, a very common technique that hacker use. They can do, uh, for example, VPN tunnel hijacking, or it hacks into your remote access uh, engineering laptop so that the virus directly go into your industrial site. So this is how the attack get into you. So and today, <clears throat> so far and so far, your system has get uh, exposed. And once the, the the virus of malware get into your system, today's mobile is they are so smart and so advanced, they can uh, install a backdoor connected to the hacker's server so that the hacker have a direct connection to your system from remote or from remote. And after that, since the hacker get access to it, you can, it can do a lot of things. We call this stage command and control. For example, they do pulse scanning, try to do traffic analysis to find out what kind of uh, power electricity control protocol you are using or gain your data soft, uh, password and then and penetrate your network. Please, uh, please do not forget the, the malware still has the remote connection to the hacker through all the stages. Um, for example, um, according to the study like black energy uh, tech, the virus stays in the power electric system and in the Ukraine distribution network for several months until the hacker found the correct way and found a good timing, it started to attack, to, to uh, take the action. So the action so that, the, for example, the power electricity blackout or they ask for ransom or somehow or even more serious uh, kind of security, uh, sa safety concern. OK, so this is how the cake happen, happens. So how should we defend ourselves against a cyber threat? 
on this slide, we will try to give you a structured view of the core defense concept of cybersecurity, and it is called defense in dips. Very often, uh, we start to think about uh, technology methods. Okay, and we should break this technology into two layers. The first layer is the component layer, and second layer is the system layer. The component layer is about how, how you protect your component, how is the security features on your devices. For example, the OS operating system level, and application software level, or on the, uh, the data is stored in the devices. Do you have antivirus running on your uh, workstations? And do you have the patch uh, so that you keep the system updated against the cyber threat? On the system level, um, the network security is the most important one that helps you to set a boundary and block out, filter out the malicious traffic. You can also install, for example, like authentication server or cryptography um, infrastructures so that your transmission, your communication is encrypted. You can also install certain kind of a system or software to manage cybersecurity to monitor or to detection. On top of that, okay, cybersecurity cannot succeed without people conducting their task in a, uh, in a secure manner. So from the smallest unit, the personnel, uh, it's about um, your personnel, how about their knowledge? Are they aware of the cyber threat? For example, as we just mentioned, if a financial uh, person, he click on the phishing email, that's very, very dangerous. So the people, they need to get training so that they have the knowledge, awareness to against cyber threat. And in your organization, there should be someone who holds the role or holds the function to manage cyber security. And uh, extended, please think about uh, your ecosystem. And this is very, very important. As we just mentioned, um, your supplier can be the source of attack. For example, the supplier website or inside the attack. So this is something you need to take extra care of. So next is the policy and procedure. So in your uh, organization, your management level, they should set up a policy, a procedure, uh, set up the policy and procedure to manage your cybersecurity. Normally, we call this a cybersecurity management system, which covers uh, risk analysis, how to design your system, and then how to do commission and operate maintenance, and so on and especially how do you respond if a cyber instance happened and how do you recover from the instance? This is one well, so-called defense in dips. And because there's a layers and layers and layers, so if one layer is bypassed or if one layer is um, being compromised by the attackers, we still have another uh, layer that to protect your system. The hacker need to go through all this layer until they hit your um, system. This is a very, very important concept. The next is that um, because this concept sounds very, uh, it's a huge, uh, complex task, but luckily we don't need to invent by ourselves. There are uh, standards and guidelines um, that help us to implement cybersecurity. And here we highlight, we list some of the most uh, common or most important standards or guidelines for power electricity. And as you can see here, um, these are the standard or guidelines and they can mapping into different layers from policy and procedure and managing the people and also talk about the technology, the system requirements or the requirements on the components. The first one is the most common one as ISO 27001. This is a, um, a, a standard for IP security. It's a very, very fundamental uh, standard. It's very, very important. And based on that, we have ISO 2702 702, which is based on the 701 and uh, down to detail is about the code of practice, how to implement this. 
And because these two, these two are for the IT security, is different from, uh, our, so to say, OT security, and especially for power electricity. So there's another standard, the ISO 27019. This one is specifically made for the power in uh, power industry. And please note that this one, um, we shouldn't see this one as a standalone standard because this one is based on O2 and O1, and it adds the additional requirements, additional uh, guidelines. So, if you are reading this, if read uh, reference to the the, the uh, 19, you should also reference to the first one and the second one. And we also uh, see this IEC 62351 uh, standard family getting more and more popular. This is because uh, traditional power communication, power electricity combination protocol, uh, like IEC 60870 or IEC 68. Uh, 70 or IEC 61850. These kind of uh, power electricity communication protocol, they uh, when they were designed, they there was no cybersecurity concern, so they do not have like like authentication or encryption. And this standard, this new standard, is trying to enhance the security by using the off-the-shelf uh, um, technology to, in, in, uh, to enhance authentication and also enhance the uh, encryption so that the data transmits through uh, between the devices. You know the device is correct, the one you are talking to, and then the data among them cannot be picking or uh, spoofing. The next one is uh, also getting popular and is very, very important for uh, industrial, although this one is not specifically made for power electricity, but it can be used in power electricity. So this one is a general for industrial automation and control system, and this is probably the only one that covers all the layers from policy procedure to people and to system layer technology and also component layer. And if you are an engineer or if you are a designer for products or systems, then you might need to know this too. For example, the IEEE 1686. This one is for, for example, the component IED device, the cybersecurity capabilities. And the next one is on the stand, uh, a standard for a requirement on the system level, how to do cybersecurity on substation automation, protection, and on control systems. Um, however, all these uh, standards, they are not free, so not uh, every people can access to this. Um, so we, uh, if you are interesting in looking into more detail uh, about uh, to learn more detail about cybersecurity, we strongly recommend you to reference to this too. Uh, one is NERC uh, CIP, the critical infrastructure protection and on cybersecurity. And next one is the guideline for smart grid cybersecurity. These two are from the US, from the US America, and it's a uh, uh, free for download and you can learn a lot of a lot. For example, this one has more than 600 pages uh, guideline for cybersecurity on a uh, smart grid. So the last thing we would like to talk about is why uh, network security is so important. Uh, I think network security probably is, is the, mo uh, the first one and most important one when you think about to implement cybersecurity in technology into your system. This is because uh, network security can do a lot. You can do prevent, protect, and detect. For example, set up a network boundary, prevent uh, uh, a malicious access, and you, it can help you to segment your network into small, small zones so that it can be more manageable. It can control uh, the device or who connecting your network. So we only allow authorized people a device connecting your network, and we restrict the data flow. So only certain type of data can go through your network and also the network security can help you to do encryption so that your data can cannot be picked or can uh, be uh, collect from the hackers and so on. Uh, I think the most important thing is to please think about uh, if you are going to implement cybersecurity in your system, you can either change, for example, replace 
or upgrade your workstation or RTU devices and all those components. However, uh, even you replace each individual one, it still cannot have certain uh, over a complete cyber security. And cyber uh, network security is a practical way and very effective countermeasure that it can enhance security overall. It can protect the whole system and even it's possible to do that without, uh, with a, a least change in the system. So maybe you don't need to change the protocol. You, you don't need to repro reprogram your system. And so you can still upgrade your system with a very, very high security. This is why network security is so important. And now we would like to let you know, Phoenix content can help. If you have uh, watched our opening video, probably you have already know that Phoenix content offers a wide range of products for power electricity, from uh, connect components, labeling components, signaling, testing, and more smart devices like a protection provide and measure and uh, transform and so on. And today our topic is the network and cyber security that fit into the cyber uh, power electricity. And also we have our latest small RTU, modularized RTU that has security features. So um, many of you probably know that Phoenix content is a market leader and has its long-term reputation, but I think not everyone knows that uh, uh, Phoenix content is also a pioneer of industrial cybersecurity uh, since 2001, so it's more than 20 years. Our NGAR firewall and the remote access product has uh, secured a lot of num a, a large number of industrial control systems all over the world. And these products are, uh, meet the, the high quality requirements and are certified with IT security made in Germany. So in addition to secure firewall, remote access and so on, are you looking for more secure RTU or secure wireless? Okay. Um, our new smart RTU is a modulized RTU based on our latest technology POC Next technology. It follows IECC 2443 uh, cybersecurity product development process and has advanced cybersecurity features in place. And we also offer a secure wireless uh, product family. We call this radio line. And by using our proprietary protocol, we call this a trusty wireless. So compared to uh, the open standard like uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and so on, radio line is much more secure and much more reliable. And it's very important that you, you have a trustworthy supplier. As I mentioned, the supplier is very, very important. And Phoenix Content holds the uh, Secure Product Development Certificate, that is IEC 62443-4-1. And also we hold the Certificate of Service Provider. So with this two, uh, we can help, we can deliver uh, separate security, high separate security level of product and service. And as your supplier, it's, it's very, very important. Phoenix Contact takes the responsibility and should be very open and responsive to, regarding to separate security and separate instance. So we have a product security instance responsible team. And, they, and we have uh, most updated security advisories on the website. You can find uh, the product information. Is there any vulnerability or how can you solve it? And how is our uh, advice? If you have cyber instance or uh, there is a vulnerability, find on the products. You can submit if you find a uh, vulnerability or cyber instance, we submit to the website or you can subscribe to get the most updated information to keep your system safe. So today uh, we very quickly go through um, the most important part of cyber security, especially for the power electricity. And it uh, this one is not the only one, it's only a starting point, it's the overview. And on the following months, uh, each, uh, I think in the second Friday, like today, the second Friday, we will launch more topic 
get into deeper and to to, to help you to understand uh, what you need and what we can help regarding to power electricity systems. For example, in October, we will help you to re review your network and see how we can do um, to help to separate your network um, by our new MGAR firewall, even without changing your network configuration. And in November, we will dig into the firewall to find out the advanced features, not only the rules. Okay, we will we will um, we will discuss how to how to implement firewall rules in the efficient way, in the right way, and also to find out more if um, more useful you uh, features that can help you to secure power electricity systems. And in December, we will talk about remote access. As I just mentioned, um, people think that VPN remote access is secure. However, it is not. But how do you do? How can you enhance? So we will introduce our MGAR Smart, a portable, a portable remote access device so that we can help your system more secure. And there are more to follow. <coughs> Uh, for example, how to minimize the uh, attack interface of your system by using our power electricity managed switches. And how about the cloud service? We have a checklist for you to consider is, if your cloud is secure or not. And um, on, in March, we will talk about patch management, how to do a secure a firmware upgrade for largest system. Okay, so this is the uh, a webinar we planned for you. And I think today we just have 30 minutes. It's very, very short, but um, a brief summary for you. Cyber electricity systems are prone to cyber threat and the cyber kill chain can give us a clue about how to do the defense. Okay, and develop defense in deep strategy is very, very important. A successful cybersecurity relies on the people, process, and technology. Network security is one of the most important countermeasures that can protect the system overall. Cyber uh, Phoenix Contact is a com has a complete offer for power industry, and we are your trustworthy supplier especially for network security, separate security products, solutions, and services. And this is today's webinar. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, please stay tuned with us. And please uh, stay tuned for, uh, for uh, the future network and separate security uh, web webinars. Okay, so I hope you enjoy it. I don't know if there is any questions, Daniel. Uh, yes, we had one question here, I think. Yes. Uh, latest in PLC security and how uh, to secure old PLC modules? Question. Oh, of course, it depends on which kind of PLC you are using. Uh, if the supplier can give you an update, then you should do the update, but it's a big task. So as I just mentioned, please think about cybersecurity in layers. If, if your PLC cannot be updated, then you should think about using other layer to protect your uh, the device. For example, as I mentioned, using network security, using network security to protect your system. So either you upgrade your PLC or you replace it to a new one. For example, our smart RTU, or you should implement a network security so that uh, to, to help to protect your system. But the ideal, uh, the, the ideal process is that you have both. So uh, always the best. You have upgrade your PLC and also have the uh, network security protect you, so that when the hackers cast in, it has to go through two layers. So I hope this answers your question. Any other questions? If not, uh, we are going to uh, finish today webinar. I hope you enjoy it and uh, please stay tuned with us.